first item of business this evening is to approve the Park and Rec Fiscal 2019 Revolving Fund. So, Mr. Galani is here to present. This is the annual approval of the uh, Park and Rec Revolving Fund required by statute. So, yeah, so uh, I think everyone has a copy of the, so these are our beginning balances for um, the uh, current year. So, going, so you um, start with 485. Correct. Correct. So, um, uh, most of it's very similar to previous years. A uh, couple changes. One at the bottom under operations, we have a, a, a defibrillator that is no longer under warranty and does not work, so we're replacing that. Um, so that's a top AED replacement. So that's a, a new, uh, a new item at the bottom. Um, in addition, um, you see uh, renovated baseball that installed dugouts. We had a going on. Three years. The original request came in 2015. Uh, it's been a couple of years to, to get it going and get it to the finish line, but we. And wasn't there a gift as well that was part? Uh, of this? That was previous. Okay. So that there's a separate. That was a separate um, um, item for dugouts. That was specifically at Carroll Park. Okay. And we were unable to do that part. So that eventually that was actually gifted to the high school um, back I think four or five years. Ago. Okay. So this is a, a separate bit. This is a chickering field, um, chickering baseball field. Um, okay. So, so not Carroll Park. Not Carroll Park. Across the road. Okay. okay. Um, so back three years ago, the Dover Sherman Youth Baseball and Softball came to us to propose um, to see if we would um, support dugouts. Our commission did at that time. So um, we got went to the school committee. Um, it is their and then their lands, and they were on board with it as well. Okay. Um, they went to the police chief back then three years ago. Um, but also, we are now, we went to bid, we had bid closing last Friday, I believe, today. So we uh, got the, um, the bids in. And that line item um, for the installed allocating, we allocated additional funds to complete that type of project, which now has 54000 in that account to cover the project. So, so with the goal of having it completed in time for the spring baseball exactly, season. Okay. Exactly. That is the goal. Yes. So I was on the Chickering School Committee okay. and this came up back yeah. in okay. somewhere in 2006, 7, yeah, eight, somewhere yeah, around yeah. there. So I believe it was, yes. So there, so there was. Yeah, 2016. So I think, I think, you have to correct me if I'm wrong here, Mark. Yeah. I think at that point in time they were also talking about lighting they were, for the field. No, um, I don't know that that was not included in any project. Okay. Um, um, and I looked at the minutes from the 2016 meeting, and it just mentioned that. It was okay. And, there, and, I, and it didn't go through at that point in time. Do you remember why? The dugouts? The dugouts. I don't. The, at the meeting in 2016, um, it was approved. Okay. So I just wonder because in my the other thing that, that I remember and, mm -hmm. and listen it's getting hard for me to you know sort of go back that that far sure. um, which is I, I, because I thought there was a question about did anybody check with the butters and I thought that the butter issue might have been linked to to a, to sort of maybe a request that never made it uh, about lighting so it was just just yeah the, there was no uh, the lighting I know was part of. Uh, Field project. Right, and that's yeah, so that yeah, this, this literally goes back to. Right, yeah. When they first, the, yeah. the lights came up first, I think in the early right. 2000, and that got turned down because of the buggers. Yeah, I think that was when um, I first got here in 2012, now it's coming down. So, um, this is all prehistory. Right, yeah. <laughs> so this project, yeah, this is a separate one that the Joe Sherman Youth Baseball came to us, and I know um, it was presented at the school committee. On September 20, it was voted 5 to 0 to um, approve the construction. Okay. Um, according to that one. And I did talk to Don Fattori at the uh, this man at the high school in February of this past year just to give her an update. Hey, we're going to move forward now. We're going to get going with it. And she said absolutely it was voted on um, back in 2016 and that was still there. Okay. Okay. I just didn't want if there yeah. was a speed bump I wanted yeah, to Yeah, there was no light on the light that it should be one of the things that I was a little bit confused. Um it was really just a pretty much a roof all the way There's a bench, there's fencing, it's really a roof to go over that full post. Um at the time uh, Chief McGowan did not want anything that was enclosed, we couldn't see through. 
Um, so that's why this, you can see fully through the dugout. So. The 38,000 for the tennis courts. Okay. Yes. Any, uh, does that involve any capital for resurfacing or any of those? Yes, that's what, um, that is, if you look below, tennis court repair underneath and operations. Yep. Um, so that is with the intention, um, if repairs need to be made, um, that would uh, be used for the tennis court. Um, usually, um, every five years we look at it, um, and then assess, um, and, um, 38,733 uh, is for the program and the people who run the program. The 58,000 is for right. capital renovations. Exactly. Got it. Got it. For all the nets that you hit balls into. <laughs> Over. What about Over. The, Over with top spin. What about the irrigation wells mm -hmm. maintenance? What, what is that? Is that a Yeah, that's been an issue. Yeah, it's kind of an emergency if a well is down. So there's nothing, it's just. Yeah, the it's on top. Marks on the playground? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so the playground, uh, there's 46. So we, there's a, a lot of costs that we have to do before we get to some players. So we have the staffing. Um, 15,000 for stuff to bring in, equipment. Um, so we make sure we can cover that if, say, no one signed up. We can still, um, some of that stuff we have to pre uh, order before we get registration. So we gotta make sure that's why we have that in that lab to make sure we can it, it looks like all the facilities, all the playground equipment at um, at Carroll is done. It looks great. The yes. the, the um, all of the you had tons and tons and tons yes. of bark mulch and yeah, so the, everything's in place and yeah, so This is monies that you, how much of these is the raw materials from fees versus town? All fees. All fees. All fees. So we have a, a 50, 53 D revolving account, um, and that's just based on the Matlash that is the FSD. And we reinvested in the program. Right, that's the exact thing that could be reinvested into uh, programs or. Um, so right. Right. Yeah. Well, I understand over days. Yeah, we had great weather. Um, but yes, yeah, so those days was great. We added this year the outdoor movement we usually do it in the spring. We added it to the fall. It allowed us to move up the time. We didn't have to wait till 8 o'clock to show it. Um, so we're able to move up. That was where you showed the spectrum. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, um, 
Bill Clark left to take another position closer to home. Um, I scrambled with Mrs. Pichillo and Mrs. Hoffman and Mr. Clark while he was still here to uh, arrange for, screen, and interview viable candidates for this position. And in front of you is the finalist that we're recommending, uh, Ms. Diana Piesek. Uh, she's, uh, we think, very well qualified by virtue of her technical orientation and her life experience to be a great new member of our team. And she was a, the finalist of five candidates? We interviewed five, and she was clearly um, by far the most preferred. So, so you know, one of, one of the things we always want to make sure of is that we continue to attract the best talent to the town. So how, how many responses did we get to the ad? Ms. DeShillo. There were many, many. We uh, you had to read them out in D right. and Dice and uh, oh, the I... MMA. Media. Okay. So we probably got about, I'd say, seventy-five or maybe a little less. Wow. Yeah. Wow. wow. Maybe a less. But you know, a lot that we got were just, I think, kind of people not just suitable. responded. They just responded, and uh, it's not really easy to do that. electronically. Yeah, it's almost like press the button and it goes out to fifty. Uh, okay. Potential. So, yeah. So, of the pool, were there more than, were there maybe 20 that were qualified? Uh, I would say less than that, maybe about 15 or so. Or yeah. Now, what were you looking for? Um, we were looking for somebody with the IT background and the experience to fit in here. And we rely principally on Mr. Clark to screen the resumes because he's the technical expert. And we interviewed the five based on his recommendation to do so. Dave, uh, uh, Mona. Yes. And Felicia. Um, Bill. Bill. And who was the who was the fifth person that, that you said was part of the interview? No, there were five. There were five. There were five. There were five. There were, there were, so Mona there were, for, the and, and Felicia. And they, and we had a first round yep. with Mona, Felicia, Bill, and myself. Mm -hmm. And then we brought back the finalist. Bill was gone already. We brought and Mona, Felicia, Carl Warnick, Carl Warnick. and I yeah. interviewed the finalist yeah. and unanimously recommend this candidate. Now part of that process, just um, humor me, we we also check references. Okay. Yes. And, and they all came back glowing. Okay. Looking looking at this resume, it it, it appears that the the strength of this candidate, but not having met her, is is her um help us support ability. And would you say that that is primarily what, I'm assuming, what we need here is, is helping? It's also network maintenance, though. Okay, the, right. the, the, um, all candidates and Mr. Clark talked back and forth on the technical stuff, and he asked some very pointed questions about command language and this and that. And, and he was satisfied with all of them that they could, in fact, maintain the system and provide the help support. This candidate, one of her, her strengths above the others was our belief that she would be a great interface with the users in addition to being technically competent. Mm -hmm. And that's critical because you know, we, people have to feel comfortable as they will with Mr. Clark with asking for help and then working with Mr. Clark to get the help and understand and learn. Um, this candidate was preeminently qualified, we think, for that. Okay. And has she taken some time off in between? Or? She's currently not working, that is correct. Okay. Her most recent position, is a, you know, this is of interest to somebody, she was an aviation mechanic. Mm -hmm. She has a passion for airplanes and she's um, getting her, seeking her, her pilot's license. Mm -hmm. And on a lark, she left the IT field became an aviation mechanic, was very good at it according to the reference I spoke to, 
And because of who I am, I said to the, to the mechanic, I said, does it surprise you that she is now looking to get into IT? And he said, no, it surprised me that she was looking to get out and into aviation mechanics. Yeah. It makes all the sense in the world that she's going back to her. So she can fix the PCs. She's mechanically in the She's got a big red effect to do drones. Because <laughs> they do fly. So I have, I have a couple of I have a couple of questions. The, um, and again, most of it is because I'm new. So, in terms of her resume, can you, uh, she was a systems administrator at Dudley Mass. For what I'm what at Dudley is where she lives. Oh, okay. So, I, is it, it systems administrator? Um, and so, I, so it starts with a with a job that stop that ends at 2015. And Correct. at least the one right. System administrator, Swift Tech, in Shrewsbury, Mass. Okay, so. And she's been at the, she's been in the aviation field since 2015. She was in the aviation field for about a year and a half. Okay, so I can, so if I were doing this resume, I would have aviation something 2015 to 2017 or something. This like was that. tailored for the IT position. This is not okay. all of her work experience. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, and then the other thing, when when it comes down to, um, what do we use as criteria? for the job. Bill's current job description? Yes. Now is that job description current? Has it been updated over time as a matter of course? It has not been updated recently, but it is current. Okay. <clears throat> and then in looking at how to provide the function, not necessarily the person, mm -hmm. um, did you consider other options? Like using retrofit or outsource guys? Well, what we do now what we've, what we've customarily done is we use both. And that's what we plan and propose to continue doing. We need somebody on site in an employee position and we need the firm to backstop for not only um, when the employee's not here, but if we need additional expertise beyond what the employee can provide. And that's been our model for the last, well, for as long as Bill's been here, 12 years. Yeah, and I think he's been here like more, yeah, 10 or more or something. He was here 12 years. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And so they'll be able to help onboard her without Bill here? I mean, he, he'll be available for... We're actually planning to put them together so she can be oriented by Bill okay. and walk her through the systems, okay. as well as you know, have the retrofit as a resource as she may need. Did we have retrofit when Bill started? Not when he started, but we've had... I, I talked to the retrofit guy the other day, and neither one of us remembered, but they've been... We've had a relationship with them for many years. And, and is is that uh, sort of follow to Bob to Bill's question uh, to That's Bob's fine. question about Bill? I used to be Bill. <laughs> they, 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 I did that. I did that. That's the point. <laughs> so I'm too sorry. <laughs> <know this. laughs> right. Good, good question. So when uh, does retrofit have that capability? To be able to to can we reach out to them to say we've got an integration project with a new person, we've got an integration project with the conversion to Gmail, we've got a new IT person. Can you <coughs> help us? Can we get more hours? How would that work if we wanted to expand their capability? Well, I'd want to talk with the with the new IT person before I answer that question. Mm -hmm. But before when, when Mr. Clark was here. He was going to do that, and as he might need retrofit, request their assistance. But between the two, certainly be able to handle all of our IT needs. So will this delay at all the um, transition to Gmail? Um, it, it, it won't facilitate it. Right, okay. But we have to get the new person on board and transition and to keep things going. Well, it, I mean, it seems to me that um, in the idea of, I mean, it seems to me when we're transitioning, I mean, it, in particular, the move to Gmail, because it also, I think that's a condition precedent to website. It's related, but the but website comes first. first. Was the website comes first? or the? Right. Yeah, yes. yes, the website comes first because, the, because there's a link to, to all, the, all the documents. Correct. So should we be... Um, 
again, I mean, I always, from my business experience, I always worry when we have one person doing something, even if it's backed up. Um, I always prefer um, a, to have an organization support us, support small units that I used to run, um, because they had a depth of experience and a depth of talent um, that really augured stronger support than one individual person. So my question is, my, my, my concern is that we provide this person, Diana, with sufficient resources on site, and I don't know if it will cost more money and if, or if we have the money, to make sure that there is a smooth transition um, and that the projects that we think are really important are adequately staffed and get done in a reasonable timeline. And I don't know what that timeline is or was or how it might be impacted. Um, you know, I heard about moving to Gmail, it seems like years ago, um, and it's September of 2018, and I don't know if it's supposed to be next month, end of year, or early next year. Well, so, Mr. Springer, it was going to be after the website, right. and the website is in development, right. and that has not been slowed down by the transition. Okay, so those two things are linked, mm -hmm. so when can we I mean, what does the, this person need to make sure that this stuff gets done in a reasonable period of time, and what is that? First, she needs to start. Yeah. She needs to be oriented. Yeah. Get up to speed on the daily operation. Yep. And then we'll answer that next question. Okay. Did Bill have a timeline? Did Bill leave a timeline for these projects? No, because the development of the website is beyond his control. So if we wanted to have one of the jobs, one of the, if, the, if assuming we're going to continue along the same process and there's not going to be any, um, uh, there's not going to be any speed bumps along the way with the conversion process, Diana could have retrofit as a resource. We could then create a timeline using Diana, using retrofit. To the extent it's within our control, yes. Yeah, to the extent it's within our control. The whole point of, of the appointment here is to keep things going the way they had been before. So, so when, when could she start? Um, I'm hopeful that uh, we can start the orientation as early as tomorrow. Great. What's the control issues around the website? That you say things are outside our control? The website development is being done by a firm that built outside higher. firm. So, so it wasn't built, it was an outside firm. Right. So that's, he has who, been, who were they? I don't recall if he was the screen, that was Bill's job. It will be Diana's job when she gets here. Robin, any other? No, I, you know, it would be nice once, I, I realize, you know, this is a little bit unfortunate, but maybe once Ms. Piercek gets up to speed and the orientation is done, if we could, because we are getting a lot of questions about the Gmail transition, only because it, it's something everybody's really looking forward to. So I think having a timeline or, or just giving, giving the committees and boards and um, a sense of when we may expect it to be up and running would be extremely helpful. Absolutely. Okay. Also be nice to know who the firm is doing the website. Mm -hmm. I can find that out for you, Mrs. Mm -hmm. Can't be everywhere all, all the time. Yeah. Any other questions? Well, th because that's, oh, out. so we have somebody who backs up, who does the backup and for the, for the, uh, servers and that kind of stuff, and that's retrofit. Um, and we have they back up the IT support. For IT support, yes. And we have don't they do they do the systems as well? They, they back up our IT person. So, okay. so Bob, the, the website is hosted by an outside manager. Right, right, right. The content for the website is us. Is, is us. Yes. So that's so yes. it's just it's just making sure that the content gets uploaded and there's an appropriate interface between us and the um, and the hosting company and I I believe that both Bill and the town clerk were working together on the content for the website so there is continuity there because they spent a lot of time working really closely on on appropriate content 
for, for the website. Right. You, you so I'm, I'm less the beta. right. I'm less concerned. I, I know there's continuity there because it was uh, they're working. You know the website because of the way the municipality works. Yep. Everything has to funnel through the town clerk. So it made a lot of sense for the IT coordinator and the town clerk to be working closely together. Yep. So as as he was as they were figuring out what appropriate content should be, that she could then say, yes, this is allowed, you, you know, because yeah. there are rules. Yeah, no, my concern is just that we have enough, pe we have right. enough so people think, but, working on this. No, and I, and, and I understand that, so, you know, so I guess the first step is, you know, what served the town well in the past is this hybrid model. And, and in my experience, I've used hybrid models in small organizations where we have some, some um, of the talent or some of the expertise in-house, certainly not everything because you can't. I mean, we can't afford to hire a IT or, or have decided that we don't need a full-time, you know, high-level IT person, but rather where our need is is more in the desktop network administration area. So, you know, for me, the first step would be to have, to hire somebody, on, and then with that person, you know, let that person get her feet wet, so to speak, and figure out what the systems are. And I think it's really important to us as a board that you know and, and, and this person knows that we are open to, to spending money to have appropriate support. It's not a matter of resources. Right. Okay. You know, so we would, you know, especially when you're getting up to speed in a job, and then there are these, these projects that there's an expectation they would be get completed. It's no, it's not that we don't trust the person in any way. You know, we just want to make sure that this person is aware that we're supportive of getting additional resources to assist with the project. Did I articulate that correctly? Yeah. That's what we're talking IT about. is, is uh, becoming increasingly important subject matter, not just, I mean, among people, in, among residents. So it's, to me it's important to make sure that how the decision was reached and all the things that were considered and the number of people who submitted resumes and, yeah, and, and the we vetting got, process, and we got all that. So that you know, so that's great. was important. Right. So we appreciate all that. Do you want to make a motion? I would definitely entertain a motion for the appointment of our IT support website coordinator, Diana Piasek. 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 I'll second that. Right. Second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And I would like Mr. Chairman to publicly thank Ms. DeShillo, Mrs. Hoffman, Mr. Clark, and Mr. Warning for dropping everything, scrambling, getting as kind as timely as we have so that we don't suffer undue delay. And I will say to the, I will share the story with the board, we had to call Mr. Clark in on Monday, and he responded on Tuesday. And when he came in Tuesday, because as Mr. Springer said, this stuff's critically important now. If it's not working, we might as well just all go home. Mm -hmm. So when Mr. Clark was here fixing it, he said, I, I had a bet with my wife. Neither one of us bet Monday morning. <laughs> <laughs> but when I saw him on Friday, and he said, you everything is set. Nothing is going to break. That, that's why. Well, when really he, nice. There's a pattern when he went on vacation, mm -hmm. day one or two after he was gone, it would be something. That's right. and, that's to Mr. Right. Okay. and that's what's oh, Mr. Springett's point. It's important mm -hmm. to have, Absolutely. you know, backup because Critical. these things, well, first of all, it's not one computer that goes down, mm -hmm. it's four or five. Right. And when mm -hmm. you have one person, you can't expect them to to take care of everything. Right, right. it's right. 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 So the we just want, right. We just want everybody to know that we are supportive of utilizing resources. Appreciate that. As these rules expand, as the many things... Well, and as we become expand, more reliant on IT, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure when you started 20 years ago, did you have a computer? No. We didn't have IT support at all. 
everybody did was on their own. Did we have personal computers or no? We did have computers. Okay. Uh, everybody was on their own as to which one. They'd go to the store with their husband and their wife, and they said, what do you think we should get? Well, let's get this one. And then they spent three weeks trying to install it because we didn't have any tech support. Mm -hmm. And if you didn't have a computer for three weeks, it didn't matter. Right. Today, as I said earlier, if the system isn't working, we might as well all go. It right. matters. We know going forward that this all has mm -hmm. to be seamlessly connected. Right. And that everybody has to have the ability to, to see it, feel it, touch mm -hmm. it, yep. right. respond to it. So thank you. Thank you for this. While we're on the topic of technology, do we need to put any money in the capital budget for any cons consulting support on IT? Or is that not a it capital be, item? It, would be, the, it would be in the operating budget okay. and it would be part when we pull when we review the it's in data management budget, right? Data process because what, what because last year I didn't was, study the all the line items. No, okay. There'll be there's time. Right. Because last year, and just as a reminder, last year there was I think it was fifty thousand dollars over and above what was spent the previous year because in anticipation of the transferring the first class to, to Gmail. Gmail. And there was another project, may, maybe the website as well. So both and of those. Security right, and security audit. And a security audit. The budgets have evolved right. dramatically over the years in terms of data processing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it needs it. Yeah. Well, same with the schools. Oh, yeah. Same with the schools. Yeah. Probably same everywhere they can afford. Probably, Probably same everywhere. Right when we pay retrofit, as an example, Mr. Springer's question. We have an amount of money that we pay them essentially in advance that we draw down from. Is that correct? So yes. we have a retainer. We have a retainer. Okay. Yes. That that amount of money we take from a budget item that we have approved last year. Okay. If we exceed that, it comes out of your pocket. If you're the chairman. <laughs> it's a reserve fund transfer. Yeah, reserve fund transfer. Like, if that, we budget, I think it's I think it's 15 days of time for them every year. Which we generally don't need, but it's there. In For the case we did. Well, I think we're all saying the same thing. Yes. That money is there. Yes. That money is there. The people are there. The resources are there. We don't have to do anything out of the ordinary Correct. to support these people. Thank you. Next item of business is to approve the fiscal year 2020 calendar, which we have been provided. Um, is that so? Good? Mm -hmm. Just changing the dates to reflect the calendar. <laughs> Should mess it up a little bit. Ooh. Systems and procedures, Mr. Systems Springer. and procedures, sir. Systems and procedures. Last year, we actually moved something, and it caused a lot of unintended consequences. So we really tried to maintain the system. One day in January. It was January 18th. We moved something. Because there's, you know, there's, there's scores of people who yeah, customize your personal yeah, 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 work around these yes. things, yes, so work you around them. Yeah. You miss somebody, so. Mr. Ramsey, is there anything we need to do um, with regards to the calendar other than we post it and we approve it this evening? And we, and we distribute it to the appropriate people. Mm -hmm. We distribute it. Mm -hmm. So I will accept a motion to approve the fiscal year 2020 calendar. So 20, it's 2019. 2019, 2019 sorry. Yeah. 2019. Or should it be 2020? It's 2020. It's, yes, 2020. it's 2020. It says 20. 2020. 2020. 2020. Yes. Right. So I've been doing this work for 40 years, and the fiscal year still screws me up. Oh, yeah. I know. It's such a difficult concept. Well, especially when you're in 2018. It says 2020 right. on, the, on, right. your, on well, your agenda. We're in fiscal 19. Yeah, we're in fiscal 19. Yes. Yeah. We're working on fiscal just 20. Just, yeah. just Starting point. July 19. Correct. Correct. In Japan. <laughs> I will accept a motion to approve. I thought we did. So moved. Seconded? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Mr. And the Rich. first order of business is capital budgets are due October 12th. Thank you, Mrs. Hunter. Maybe capital budgets will have a new so, <laughs> that, that's, that's looking less likely, by the way. I don't know. Selectman's so updates, uh, the next item of business in the town administrator search. I would like to announce this evening that we, after um, interviewing three of the, the um, top firms in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts that have done a significant amount of this work, put a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of meetings into this, 
the board has selected the Collins Center at the University of Massachusetts in Boston to be the firm that will help us with the search. We, we thank uh, everybody who was involved in this process, the people who interviewed. We also thanked and I personally called the other finalists that we interviewed and I know Mr. Ramsey did the same thing and, and uh, after you reached out to them and we had our conversation and had that conversation I thought it was appropriate that we reach out to them as well and, and extend, uh, congratulate them on the effort. Uh, there was a, a set of circumstances with regards to time that made the choice of the University of Massachusetts a very appropriate one and one in which um, was a was a pretty important factor. So we but, were. But more importantly, they also had, you know, the skill set yeah. that that we need need for the search. They have um, completed searches for town administrators in Holliston and Millis, which we saw, you know, what what they did and the process they used. Uh, the other thing that they do have that the other firms did not have, being part of UMass, they also have um, the ability to to help us onboarding the new town administrator and looking at processes. If that is something that we would like to do in the future. Yeah, their skill set, their suite of services were right. absolutely something that we will utilize. And in addition to that, we will have on the website, the town website, the collateral material that Mrs. Hunter was just discussing that they presented to us so everybody can see the suite of services and the skill set and the jobs that they have been successful, the searches that have uh, been completed most recently. And it just so happens that the lead person from the organization is a Dover resident, which we did not know, so. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So to Dick and Mary, congratulations, and to the other finalists, thank you very, very much and our continued success. I would also like to report that at our next meeting of this board on Tuesday of next week, we will... At 7 a.m. At 7 a.m. at 0700. We will announce the members of the screening committee for the town administrator search. Um, and thank you very much for all of the people who have have been uh, have approached us. We've approached. We've had discussions with the town administrators. Had discussions with, and um, it's been a very enlightening process, and one I think was going to be very successful. The other items for discussion this evening are updates on Carroll Community Center. Um, other than our ongoing conversation with the Carroll community with prospective members of the, and composition of the Carroll Board, and with Ford Spalding, we are, um, it, it is ongoing. We have this week, and I believe Mr. Ramsey, you sent out the request, or the con confirmation, the contract. Of the contract, thank you, of to hire on-site insight, which will help us with the first phase of the data analytics, and the analysis process of the of the building and the use and the functionality. Anything you'd like to add to that, Mr. Springer? No, we uh, we've posted on a couple of different sites the fact that we're still looking for people who would like to um, participate in the in the project, um, so that we can get this thing uh, up and running as quickly as possible. You know, we do we do envision that there'll be a core committee and then there may be offshoots off of right. those committees. Right. So if people are concerned about the commitment, a time commitment, there will definitely be opportunities for less of a time commitment. Um, and you know, for those spin-offs, we would love to have um, individuals with expertise in a certain field, you know, that may be willing to to volunteer mm -hmm. to assist us further evaluate some of those areas. I had a conversation today with a woman who was uh, who was brought to us from the warrant committee and uh, through the warrant committee, who's a new resident to Dover and, and um, working mom and, and was was the type of, of person new to the town who was very very excited about yeah. the prospects and the process of doing this. Yeah. And, it was exactly the type. We have made the announcement publicly. We've, we've, we've spoken um, at length about this.
that the committee is going to have a diverse set. And as Mrs. Hunter said, there will be a number of different, we envision a number of different com committees as a part of this process with very, very diverse skill sets, very diverse backgrounds from, from students to, to uh, new moms, to people who are, who, have, who are new to town, who are married with no kids or living in the town without children and, and anticipating possibly starting a family at some point in time, to seniors. As well as long-term residents. Long -term. Long -term. Absolutely right, absolutely right. Long Do you qualify as a residents? Uh, I don't know if Dave was qualified yet. Do I qualify as a senior? <laughs> absolutely. So the Carroll Community Center is, is uh, we have, as all of you know, we have been working diligently on this and it's continued work in progress. The rail trail item for update, we have had a number of correspondence with our outside council with our, uh, regarding the rail trail. The, where we are with the rail trail currently is the MBTA attorneys that are working with our outside con council have a separate set of environmental attorneys within the MBTA who are outside councils of the MBTA's council that our outside council are working with currently to finalize the, the license environmental attorney. licensing process. The field day for the attorneys. Right, it's yeah. the, li the license agreement, which again allows us to get onto the rail trail to complete our due diligence. So this final phase. We had hoped to have an answer. We had hoped to have an answer tonight. tonight. So John, is there a, is, is this something that this is this is another one of those things? Sounds like it's outside our direct it's control. Completely outside. It's of not only is it outside our control, it's outside the MBTA's internal council's control. So the MBTA relies upon outside council to set the precedent and to uh, to read the, and and draft the documents that we have sent, and there's been numerous iterations of these documents so going back and forth. We are we believe we are right down to the final set. Great. So is there any oh, well our council, you know, credit to him touches base almost every other day with the MBTA. Yeah. Um, he also reminded them that we had he he reminded them on Monday of this week that we had a meeting today. Today. And right. you know, we had really hoped to be able to present this since we had hoped to present it at our last meeting at that day. Right. But, so, you know, to his credit, he, he is constantly reminding them that it's something that we really want to get closure But on. there's no formal ETA. No. Well, they keep, they, keep. they keep responding and saying, yes, we understand, we're going to try to get it to you. But they have a lot of boxes they need to check within their process. Teresa Patton, with in, inside the MBTA, has been exceptional these past several months of, of communicating, keeping the lines of communicating. Once we, we really got to that point where we had an ongoing dialogue with all the right people and all the right parties, it, it's been something that they've, the amount of correspondence back and forth has been um, exceptional. So Stephen uh, has done, Stephen Anderson at uh, our outside council and his firm we can't thank them enough. They've put in a lot of work. It's probably going to cost us about two point three million dollars in legal fees, but no, it won't. I'm kidding. <laughs> well, don't say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you gotta be careful. Yeah, very careful. No, it's, yeah. it is a. It, it it has been an extensive process, okay. and that was a joke for those who watched. Well, it. it's you know we made a commitment to the town to ensure that we covered Dover's exposure and that any lease we would potentially enter into would would be as good a lease as we could get for the town of Dover. Mm -hmm. right. And we've made and we've kept that commitment and town meeting knew that we would be paying for the legal fees until such time that we had a lease that could be executed. And part of that was also having this license agreement, because the license agreement is going to allow us to do some of the the final steps in the due diligence process right. that could potentially un unveil something that you know we would lead us maybe not to sign the lease. So it is really important for us to get this license agreement 
so that it will allow us to do what we need to get done. What's unfortunate about this is, you know, we had hoped to be able to begin, um, you know, to, to begin with the design process. And the design process for the rail trail will be funded by the friends. But until we're able to do this, the, the, these final due diligence items, everything else gets delayed. So it, it really is. It's unfortunate. We, you know, we we were excited. We thought things were moving. You know, I think all of us thought that by the end of September mm -hmm. we would really be moving forward. But unfortunately, we're still waiting for the MBTA. We can't also stress enough the unique nature of this contract, the unique nature of what we're asking and what the MBTA has entered into in very good faith to give us what we want. We would ask for something way outside the box. They're trying to give us exactly what they want and they have to make sure all of their T's are crossed and their I's are dotted. So. so unless I'm missing something, my understanding is right now we're just still negotiating the license agreement. Right. The license agreement with regards to, but the, it, right now it, the environmental access is where we are in the process. Once they seem to be satisfied with the language, then we most likely will have something. And that's where the rail trail update is. Any other items? Yep. For, for, item. for uh, updates, appointments. Mr. Chairman. Sir. I'm recommending the appointment of uh, David Candias as the deputy water operator for a period of three years. Our prior deputy water operator, whose name I'm embarrassed to say escapes me at the moment. Um, it will come to you tonight. It will come to me in the middle of the night. Um, You're too young, David. For he's, that. Um, <laughs> Mr. Springer. Um, he is no longer in the business. He did not re certify his license, and we are required to have a deputy water operator. So Carl Warnick is recommending as a water operator this person as his deputy. And this person is duly licensed. He actually works for Colonial Water. He's, he's eminently qualified to help us should we need. I will accept a motion for the appointment. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Mr. Ramsey, any other appointments? No, sir. Have we completed that? that uh, that list spreadsheet? Almost. 99.9. 99.9. Never could get the Dilbert cable guy. Um, the, the cable uh, advisor position is vacant. Okay. So the next item of business is an account balance. And this is a request for transfer, Mr. Ramsey, or is this account balance notice a, a bill to be paid? Simply a prior notice, Mr. Chairman putting you on notice that we had an unexpected replacement of an AC unit in the west, in the east wing. So this is um, money we haven't budgeted. We always hope we're not going to need to come for a reserve fund transfer in the spring, but it's been our practice when we have a substantial unexpected expense to put you on notice. And so that, that's what happened. And would you like a, a motion for this $10,720 transfer? I'd accept a motion for the transfer of $10,720. Yes, so moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And it seems like the compressor burned down, so it's replacing a compressor. Mm -hmm. yeah. The whole unit had to be replaced, but the reason was the compressor. And contamination and of to the, the hottest weather. Space. Oh, See, computers break, AC breaks, AC breaks. and the heat it's breaks. Convenient time, right. But only in the winter. That's right, only in the winter. So the special licenses consist of the Connor Center mainly and Hale Reservation. So I will read through them. The September 26th at the Connor Center, September 28th, Boston College uh, Atonement and Comparative Theology meeting at the Connor Center. September 30th, a baby shower, Hale Reservation. October 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, the Connors Center um, Mission and Ministry. The October 5th, <coughs> Rehearsal Dinner, Connors Center. October 6th, Wedding at the Connors Center. October 7th, a wedding at the Connors Center. October 11th, a meeting and reception, Connors Center. And October 12th and 13th, Boston College Law School meeting and reception. And I assume Mr. Repetti will be invited. <laughs> <laughs> He will represent us there. He may be the first person. <laughs> ever. Ever. <laughs> no, probably not ever. I promise you I would not. Last year. <laughs>
Yeah, must have had it too, right? So I will accept a motion for the approval of the special licenses. Second. All in favor? Aye. The approval of the minutes. Two minutes, right? The 15th and... 15th and uh, October 27th. Mrs. DeShillo, you get a special thank you for the minutes. For the, MB, for the MBT award? That was it. Yeah. <laughs> for the for minutes. The 15th. Of that the 15th. Okay. There were uh, challenging, yeah. <laughs> challenging circumstances around the meetings of the 15th mm -hmm. and the day long event uh, and the evening events as well. Any questions, concerns? I have not on the 15th. I just have, do we, have we completed the 15th? Because there were things that were coming. We had, what, three meetings that day? Uh, there's, uh, I think we have one more set coming. For one the more set coming correct. for the interviews with, with the interviews. That's correct. Okay, yes. okay, okay. That was, yes. So this that would was, be approval of August 15th, yeah. part three. Yeah. Right. Right. So yep. this is August 15th, part three. Right. We yes. have August part 15th, part one. Which was the meeting. The Which meeting. was approved. With the staff. Yeah. And that was approved. That was approved. Yeah. Right. And the interviews would be part two. Okay. So motion to accept minutes. Part seven. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So no, I, I was thinking two. when I first did the minutes for part one, I thought, you know, you basically, I did the first part and it said, and then the meeting adjourned to recess at 2 p.m. But I guess they were all and then we got seven back meetings. Yeah, and then we got back at three, right? So it was three o'clock that day. It was three o'clock. Yeah, right. right. Okay. And the next item are the minutes from planning. August 27th planning. Right. Yeah, so motion and I to kept approve. saying that I thought we didn't. No, right. Yeah, I got, yeah, right. yeah. Right. so motion to, to uh, approve the, uh, the minutes of the August 27, 2018 BOS planning meeting. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And I still need to do the minutes for the meeting we had last week, which I'll get to you guys. Okay, so comments? Concer I, I have one, two, two, um, two comments to make, two announcements to make regarding this weekend. If uh, for those of you watching, no, 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 and we had the pole park team time trial. Well, that was last weekend. But yeah, last weekend, right. which went off without incident, with exception of one transfer, uh, post race was a uh, one trans one medical transfer post race. Oh yeah, that was, that was, that was a bad thing. Huh? Yeah, that yeah. was a bad thing. That was a really bad thing. But unfortunately, it was a rather freak accident. Um, just one individual on a bicycle uh, transported and released the same day. So, uh, so a good outcome, uh, 120 riders in the morning on Saturday and 158 riders through the town at the triathlon on Sunday. So, and just congratulations and thank you to all the volunteers. There were uh, 20, 27 volunteers on the road on Saturday and there were about a uh, hundred kids, high school um, girls, field hockey, ho soccer, and boys soccer on the streets, marshalling and directing traffic. So for the triathlon. So thank you to everyone who participated. So there was one other thing before we before we adjourn. I know you had a question. You got a question from a resident about flashing stop signs. We did. We did. We did. Would you like to discuss? discuss no, I would not. But I would, I'd like you to start, and I'd like to interrupt it you know, <laughs> as you go through your pre Thank you, your you, know, you, you do that so well. You just have to cut it down to a science, Mr. Spring. I know just as when as it's, I know just when it's time. time. She's very skilled at that. So we had a question from a resident with regards to the flashing stop signs, which have been installed at uh, Haven and Center Street, uh, Donnelly and Farm Street. And the question came up, how did the stop signs become flashing? Uh, we did a little bit of research, and the stop signs were not um, 
installed for no for, for reason there were existing stop signs. The stop signs were replaced, flashing stop signs were replaced, and they were replaced for very good reason. Right. How's that for a sec? That's not bad. So what happened was Craig Hughes, superintendent of streets and Chief McGowan, um, took this request from a resident, uh, hired a consultant, I believe, who, who took a look at the intersection and its history, um, and actually came back with the recommendation to put in um, the, the flashing uh, stop signs. Um, so it really was a, a, to me, it was a kudos to, kudos, is that the word? Kudos. No, kudos. kudos. To uh, Chief McGarry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But they will, they will at some point. Um, to the Chief and to, and to Craig, Superintendent of Streets, because it was really a thorough, well done uh, response to this particular resident's uh, questions and issues. And my understanding is, is that at the school, I haven't driven by Farm Street, um, um, that they put in sort of it's flesh and pedestrian mm -hmm. signs, yes. not a stop sign. Correct. Um, and um, and they also put in the state law sign on farm, I believe. I haven't seen that one. Uh, I think that's what Craig what Craig had said. And um, and clearly there was a number of issues about from people in the area who who children, uh, you know, walked and crossed the street to uh, to get into the middle school, etc. And my understanding is also that the, the uh, cross-country track, track team goes back and forth um, across that. Uh, so it seemed like uh, quite a reasonable uh, thing to do, right. even though it might be startling. <laughs> you know, first, I think, I think in, in light of the tragedy where those two young girls in need of yeah. were killed crossing the street, it's, I, I really commend the professionals in this town for, yep. for looking at dangerous intersections because those flashing stop signs are really, you know, they're not intrusive in any way, but they're more visible than just a regular stop sign. It's like sign. extra reminder. It's an extra reminder. Yep. And, you know, I, I, I sometimes am in my own little world and people are crossing the street and you don't see it. so. I think I think it makes a lot of sense when safe, it's safety first. Yeah. This was safety first. I think we covered it, John. Yes, we did. I think yeah. we, we definitely. Did I, did I, I should I interrupt you now? Or should, sure. Or can I, should I wait? Okay, so I'll make a motion yes, to adjourn the meeting. <laughs> you think? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you.